Hello, friends, and welcome to uh, episode nine of the Tavern Shark Tank of the Metaverse, where Web3 gaming projects pitch to guild leaders and VCs in order to get funding, but also direct and transparent feedback. Today is kind of a special uh, episode as we have the chance to do a playtest of a new game, Smashverse. So we will first uh, start by uh, playing a, a game uh, and like all together, and then we'll go through the pitch and the feedback from guild leaders and VCs. So I will uh, start by uh, sharing my screen and I will go in the game straight away. In the same time, I will ask each of you to uh, briefly introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Oya. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and partners at Sanctuary Capital, and uh, we invest in back early stage teams uh, in the Web3 space with a primary focus on uh, metaverse and gaming. Um, um, happy to pass the mic over to Sarah Toby. Yep, so my name's uh, Alexi or Sarah Toby. I'm head of partnerships at YGG. I work extremely closely with the acquisitions team. Um, and I get to speak to lots of cool games uh, in the process of um, figuring out which ones YGG is going to be involved with at various different levels. Hey, Louis. Hey, um, you know, thanks a lot, Jeremy, for having me on on, on this episode. I'm uh, Louis, the founder of Xbox. So we are a very competitive community of, of uh, gamers uh, in Web3. So some of the most competitive on Gods and Chain, EV.io, and, and other great games. Um, we're also building the digital identity of uh, players, both in Web2 and Web3. And we're also building decentralized esports teams. And we do invest in the games that we um, play. We've invested in recently in The Harvest, uh, Bullness, and other cool games. Hey, Will? Yep, uh, Will Pazos. I work for Misfits Gaming Group. Um, we have a Web3 arm called Blockborn, uh, where we also do some stuff in the competitive space, mostly around the Tezos blockchain. Uh, and then we're also investing in uh, different projects uh, that are heavily game focused in Web3. Um, we have a, a specific fund for that. And then we also have a creator fund uh, that spans outside of esports and more just to the influencer side. Um, but we are looking to dabble in any creators that are interested in doing Web3 projects as well, be it a game, be it a NFT collection, whatever it is. Okay, perfect. So uh, then River, maybe you can uh, quickly introduce yourself and tell us uh, about the game that we're currently uh, playing and streaming. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'll do a quick intro and I'll also pass it to Jack to, to do an intro as well. Um, Absolutely. Hey everyone, I'm, I'm River. Good to meet you all here. Thanks for having me on, on the show, Jeremy and everyone else. Um, yeah, you know, my name is River. Uh, online, I'm known as the People's DJ. Uh, you know, a hardcore gamer since as since long as I can remember. A big fan of um, Super Smash Bros., Mortal Kombat, uh, Tekken, you know, Soul Calibur kind of series. Um, you know, S Smash vs. what it essentially is, is a next generation battle royale game with um, melee combat and, uh, you, you know, um, uh, the last man standing kind of famous deathmatch, well, not deathmatch one, but the, la the famous uh, battle royale last man standing mode, uh, combined into one. Um, we will tell you more about the game, uh, you know, a little bit later today, and we will do a playtest as well. Uh, but in the mm -hmm. meantime, I'll, I'll hand over to Jack to do a little intro about himself. Cheers, Ruby. Yeah, and great to great to be here and be on this episode. So lovely to meet you all. Uh, I'm Jack, I'm VP of Studios, I'm heading up the game development side of things on Smashverse, uh, also uh, helping out a lot in the Art production for the NFTs that you can see right now that you're playing with um, as a game ready NFTs. Uh, I've had nearly 25 years in game development, very much a kind of traditional Web2 background um, uh, and been with Serenity for the last seven months. Um, yeah, getting involved and, and seeing what we can do to amplify uh, the game experience um, with some of the blockchain functionality. I think significantly from my side and bringing all the kind of AAA expertise, having spent 16 years with Electronic Arts Criterion Games leading development teams for the Burnout, for Need for Speed, um, for Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, and for, for Battlefield 1 and 5 2, and uh, co leading the effort to, to build the first Battle Royale game mode for, for Battlefield, which was Firestorm, which was very cool indeed. But yeah, great to be here and I'm really pleased to show you. Fantastic. So, yeah, maybe River, as we are currently playing uh, the game, uh, uh -huh. can you tell us more about? so? What we're what we're doing specificities of the game gameplay, especially as we will go more in detail about the the, the economics, the business side, and what you're looking for right now. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, sure thing, Jeremy. Um, I've just reset the match for everyone, so we will be hanging on the uh, uh, the screen for just a few moments. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to start the match. There we go. Boom. So you should be able to kind of see your character. Um, Jeremy, mm -hmm. if you could go and run into the middle kind of uh, area where the, the gate is and the, and the pond is, uh, that way yeah. you know, we can kind of go, um, the players can, uh, or the streamers and the viewers can uh, see what we're doing. Awesome. Cool. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, one second, guys. I just need to tell housekeeping. <laughs> um, guys, wants uh, to keep on us. That's it. I think we're all trying to cheat a little bit. Yeah, I think it was, it's a good sign that you uh, you can't just stay still. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, what we see here is essentially um, our kind of um, uh, battle royale mode where multiple players can essentially uh, join the game. Um, what you see here is essentially your your kind of fighter or your character. Um, you know, these are essentially 3D game ready assets. Not only are they PFPs, but they're also um, you know assets that you can use inside the game to kind of uh, battle each other out with. Um, in terms of core gameplay mechanics, you know, um, uh, we've got very kind of uh, familiar kind of uh, buttons. Um, you know, your base attack, which is like X on the on the gamepad, or click uh, that just does a very very short quick punch. Uh, you can kind of press it multiple times to kind of string it into a combo. So if you just try that there, there, me, there you go. You can kind of see it. Um, mm -hmm. The end of the combo normally kind of um, uh, triggers essentially a setup attack. So in this case, if if you um, if you see it here, there you go, boom. So I'm, I'm now launched into the air, and you could, if you try to, you could follow up with uh, another attack after you've launched me in the air as well mm -hmm. um other buttons as well is we have grapple so grapple is basically the y button so i'll just kind of show that over here to you and then i can just essentially you know attack you a little bit during the grapple as mm -hmm. a result as well um, i can also throw you uh if i grappled you as well and the whole okay. idea behind the, the throws is is um you know you should be able to throw your opponent off of um, objects etc um mm -hmm. you know or off of buildings to kind of damage them and get some space from them as well um we also have a, a, a sprint button, which is basically um, the, the left trigger. So if you just hold that, you should be able to kind of sprint and kind of um, uh, get away from opponents a little bit quicker oh. as a, as a What result. button is that? Uh, it's the left trigger on my side. I think it might be shift for you, Jeremy. Okay. What's, what's, what's throw, though? Sorry. Oh, uh, throw is on the white. Yeah, on throw desktop. Is on desktop, uh, I believe it's middle click or right click. No, right click is shield. Ah, okay. So uh, try middle click. It should hopefully work for grapple. Did it work for you? Um, no, it didn't. And middle click seemed to free has frozen me. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't I shouldn't do that. Uh, if you if you get stuck on the map, just press F one. By the way, it should hopefully reset your character. Um, throw. Oh, oh, it should be Q. Try try that one. The grapple. Yeah. I see. Got it. Should okay. Yeah, and, uh, sorry, guys. I, I, I'm very used to playing on the gamepad. I'm the gamepad guy of the team. Um, no worries. Yeah. But, so that's that's kind of a grapple. Um, the whole idea behind grapple punch is very much around, um, you know, giving players essentially a different frame rate advantage depending on what move they they select. You know, so um, you can also block, which is um, the the right trigger um, or mm -hmm. E. Um, so that essentially allows you to kind of block punches, but uh, you can't block grapples. So if there is a player that's essentially blocking too much, you can just press the grapple button to kind of uh, get through that block as a result. Um, very similar to Super Smash Bros. Um, and even some of the old kind of uh, wrestling fighting games, uh, you know, from the, the kind of 2000s genre, um, you know, in terms of those kind of gameplay mechanics. Um, you also have a special smash attack. If mm -hmm. Um, on the the joypad, um, or I believe uh, it's F on the um, the keyboard, you should be able to kind of charge up a punch. That's the middle click, I believe. Yeah, for me it's just maintaining. Oh, the middle the... click. Okay, fine. For you guys, the middle click. Okay. See so yeah, if you. Yeah. So if you hold the middle click, it should work there. Yeah. So those. And, uh, another another pretty um, good move that I've, are, I've discovered. Is, Go ahead, Sorry, I was just saying I, I discovered right quite a cool move that if you jump and then do middle click, you do like yeah, a kind of a little animation thing, <laughs> like a kind of falling. I just like ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's like yeah. it's really hard. So, can you can you explain the concept of killing someone? Because I see we all to a zero, and how do you uh, finish someone off? Uh, yeah. Mind. So, um, just to finish off on the on the last kind of part around the the um, uh, the combat mechanics, if you sprint and then press the the right trigger, or um, you know that should essentially allow you to to dodge. So, I can see some of you doing it already. Um, so that's you know again that's just really important when it comes to like you know running away from people dodging attacks etc um as well and then um mm -hmm. there's also a counter button so if you do press just the middle click uh not hold but just press it once your character should dodge and then throw a throw a punch basically so again that's you know gives you a slight frame rate advantage compared to uh attacking players if you do want to kind of punish them for for attacking you at the wrong time um so yeah you know when it comes to punching you can either dodge um, or you can kind of counter, or you can block. Basically, there's three ways to kind of um, you know prevent getting damage there. Um, in terms of how to kill uh, or kill a player, um, what you see is once a player goes down to uh, below 25% health, um, they essentially have the 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 red kind of uh, knockout knockout kind of icon on the top of their heads that's flashing. Uh, that means they are ready to be knocked out of the of that stock. Um, so what you essentially have to do is either hold up the, the kind of smash button, which is the middle click, hold that, and then hit the player. Um, that will knock them out. Or you can grapple them and then basically uh, do a finisher, which is essentially pressing the grapple button and then pressing it again. Uh, and that will kind of knock them out as well. Um, so that's kind of like two of the ways you essentially win the match. Um, and if you notice at the bottom, you do have health as well, um, which is um, like the, the hearts. So those are essentially stocks. Very similar to like Super Smash Bros. Um, you know, although we're a battle royale game, but we're not a battle royale game with one life. You know, you start the game with three, and that's very deliberately designed because we want players to kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, be very kind of aggressive with their action. Uh, you know, we don't want players to camp and hide, etc. Um, and you know, we want it to be a bit of an action-packed kind of um, melee combat game. Um, so instead. Of having one life where you know you treat it as super precious and you're very worried about losing that one life, we give you three so you can kind of you know be aggressive or defensive depending on how many lives you've got, etc. Um, yeah, that is the core gameplay mechanics. Uh, we do have different archetypes as well. Mm -hmm. So if you press the F6 button, you should be able to change your your archetype to a different kind of fighting class. Um, right now, we have three archetypes uh, in the game, which is essentially the the wrestler, the boxer, and the MMA fighter. Uh, but you know, eventually we will have fourteen different archetypes inside the game that are all kind of inspired by, by um, you know, uh, various different martial arts. And then, uh, lastly, if you press Tab, you should be able to change your character's skin. Uh, changing the skin doesn't really have any effect. Uh, it's just you know more for visual visual appeal. Okay, so when we reach one minute thirty. We will uh, stop, but for now, let's play for for real. So I don't know who is not playing. Louis, maybe you can uh, you can comment and be. <laughs> you're running an esport guild. Come on, or esport. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you can. You have to be yeah, a streamer. Yeah. yeah, I don't know who's playing yeah. who. Um, oh, I am the one streaming. Yeah, just, just yeah. Just remember, guys, you can uh, change your character if you if you want to by pressing the F6 button. If you want a different yeah. archetype. I don't know who. So who is player? Uh, two hundred seventy-six. Uh, I'm, I'm the zombie. Two seven six. Oh, yeah. oh, that's why you're killing me. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Oh. You're, not, you're not bad, Jeremy. Though you, you kind of you got the swing of it. I don't know. Of course. There has been some training. Okay. Damn. Damn. Okay. We're, we're I'm in finishing territory. Oh, I got you. Oh, you dodged it. No way. Oh, damn it. I didn't grapple you. I just didn't. Uh, uh. Okay, we'll okay. play five less seconds. And I think, okay. So I think we had a pretty good idea of the uh, gameplay. So that was really fun, actually. I, ha I had some fun.
uh, like you can see, I'm a bit red because I was focused and really like in, into it. So it's a very good point. I uh, uh, really liked it. So the way it's going to start now is uh, we, we've seen the gameplay. So River, you have you're going to have three minutes to do the pitch. So we already know the gameplay. You can focus on other things. And uh, after the three minutes, uh, like all the gear leaders and VCs can ask you some questions and then give you feedback. So uh, do you want to share your screen with a pitch deck? Awesome. Cool. Uh, I think we'll do a quick introduction of the team. Uh, you know, I'm River, as everyone kind of mentioned. You all know who I am. Uh, you know, my, my role within Smash First is very much focused around um, community building, marketing, a little bit of art direction. Uh, I'm a big combat game fan, you know, grew up playing Smash Bros, etc. Um, hence building, building Smash First and the kind of vision behind that as well. Um, I'll pass it over to Jack to do a quick intro and, and talk a little bit more about some of our other team members before I go into more about Smash First and the vision behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, River. And kind of covered a bit about myself earlier and my background and 25 years in game development, particularly with with EA and Battlefield uh, and Star Wars Battlefront. So I understand like what AAA game development looks like and should feel like. Um, and, and that's the kind of way we're building here, which is absolutely focusing on the the, the game experience. Um, we're building the team with with a lot of deep experience. Our TD Alberto, uh, also nearly 25 years deep, uh, one of the key architects around the CryEngine. <coughs> Um, also built his own uh, Squirrel uh, language, which is still being used today, but like of Apex Legends and other games. Um, look him up. He's, he's got a, a ton of experience. Um, and then our lead game designer, Kyle, uh, worked with Nintendo, with Netflix on mobile games, really understands, um, you know, core game loops and, and monetization, um, as well as other people that we're hiring and coming on all the time. So, uh, yeah, a lot of experience uh, within a small team. Um, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, so just to kind of, you know, share with you guys more about Smash Bros. itself, um, you know, what we're building is essentially a next generation battle royale game with melee combat and asset ownership at its core. Um, you know, Smash Bros. is very much focused around uh, close quarters combat. So unlike other kind of traditional first person shooter games, which are more to do with, um, you know, like Fortnite and, you um, um, uh, you know, Escape from Tarkov, etc. Uh, Smash Bros. is more about, you know, the kind of hand-to-hand -hand fighting combat. We kind of pitch it more as Fortnite meets Street Fighter uh, in that kind of realm. Um, you know, and why we've picked Smash Bros. and why we've picked, you know, melee combat as a kind of a focus. Uh, one, you know, the the um, action game kind of is a 26 billion market. Uh, there are over 1 billion kind of combat sports fans around the world. Um, you know, and, and the battle arena genre, you know, has got um, just, you know, um, uh, Fortnite and PUBG alone have over 81 million active monthly players. Um, you know, so this this kind of combination of melee combat and battle royale is very much a growing market um, that's yet yet to be kind of, you know, tapped and exploited by teams. Um, you know, we have several different game modes within Smash First. First is 1v1, 2v2. Uh, but then we've also got essentially the uh, battle, re battle royale kind of mode as well. Um, and the, the, the one we want to do two matches are really, really important because they're, they're more intimate. They're more kind of a close quarter matches. Um, and we want to make sure players still have fun playing those modes, um, you know, before we essentially, you know, put them into a, an arena with kind of 30 other kind of people. Um, this is the kind of core game loop. Uh, you take part in a match, fight, use the finishing move, take stocks, uh, finish the match, and you reap kind of rewards. Um, taking stocks is really important for us. Um, in Smash First, you start off with three lives. Rival, you, with one. It's, it's been three minutes. You'll have to wrap it up in two sentences. Sorry. Oh, okay, cool. Well, that's what we're building, guys. Uh, you know, battle royale game with melee combat and asset ownership at its core. It's a free-to-play business model as well. In case anyone is wondering, uh, you know, we're very much focused around, um, um, you know, attracting players through traditional kind of. Um, uh, free to play, you know, revenue revenue ways that uh, you know Fortnite and other kind of mobile games are perfected. Okay, and what are you asking? Uh, what are you raising, and uh, for what value at what valuation? Uh, we're we're quite deep in discussions with various funds already around valuation wise. Um, you know, we we want to kind of work with more gaming focused VCs, which is really really important. Um, you know, so I'm happy to kind of obviously go, go into details about the round, you know, privately with, with you all as well. Um, you know, but our main focus is getting funds that love games, um, you know, have very clearly invested in gaming products before as well. And kind of, uh, you know, want to support, uh, you know, the Web3 kind of gaming genre for, for the future. Okay. Uh, maybe, Will, you can start. 
Sure. What's the, when you look at your product compared to the rest of the market, what's the main competitive advantage you guys have outside of, you know, your team having experience? Like what in the game is different? How are you connecting to web three? Like where's the, where's the secret sauce in your mind? I can take that if you like, River, uh, which is, I think it's a combination of things actually, Will. Um, I think, you know, the one, the, the battle royale genre is such a huge kind of genre in itself itself a kind of like subgenre of FPS is that the just the breadth of what we're trying to do with I think the Malay combat and the environments is is quite different to something like Rumbleverse, for example, which is extremely vertical. The you add in then the the combination of archetypes uh from kind of more traditional fighting games, which is missing um from a a, a lot of these kind of uh, Malay combat games too. Um some of the arena games like Overwatch, Apex Legends, you know, the idea of picking your team is really important and we want to kind of bring that to the Battle Royale space. I think then when you look at stuff like the, the, the social NFTs, which add a new dimension, kind of really bring that social element to communities um, and then layering in clans, factions, the idea of having rivalries and kind of more kind of longer narrative arcs that you can tie to, to, tie to season passes. I think it's a combination of all these things, which is, you know, the way that kind of games uh, have been going for the last 10 years of like genres, genre kind of like boundaries have been merging and kind of like melding. So. Um, it's a combination of three or four things that we're kind of cherry picking from other genres to to make this distinctly different. Okay, a lot of stuff there. And then, um, what when you look at your project that it's in its current state, uh, you know, how long and how expensive is it going to be to get to the point where you can compete with the titles you've mentioned? Because from what you've said, you, you've compared yourself to you know Fortnite, and you mentioned Overwatch, and you mentioned other battle royales. It sounds like that's where you guys are headed in terms of what you're aiming for, quality wise. You know, comparison-wise, or or am I getting that wrong? Not at all. No, I think in terms of like gameplay and kind of um, production values, absolutely. Um, something like you know Fortnite, um, you know, is a is a years long, you know, multiple years worth in progress. We we feel like we kind of like got a big head start because we built an entire NFT collection for the characters. We've done a lot of the heavy lifting, uh, and I hope you kind of like feel the same way as me, which is the the visual quality is really high. So we're looking at uh, pretty much the whole of next year, kind of building out from a pre-alpha to a full live version, um, but as a platform. So um, it's a kind of onwards journey from there. The, the core game for uh, March, summer next year, a core kind of one with one 2v2 experience, mm -hmm. and then building it out with um, the, the community side of things and the uh, full kind of like full polished um, launch version towards the end of the year. And how do the, the NFTs interact with your characters? Is there a play to earn mechanic or what's the, the interaction between the NFTs and, and the game itself? Yeah, um, so, you know, there's small earning mechanics with the NFTs, uh, but not large earning mechanics, right? We see ourselves as just building a normal, a normal kind of game, you know, um, as opposed to like a Web3 kind of lead game. Uh, whilst we do use, you know, the blockchain for various different kind of um, in-game and external kind of game mechanics, uh, it's not like the USP, right? The USP is the game itself, um, you know, so being able to buy an NFT and play it as your character, etc., that's that's a bonus, it's a nice to have, not a fundamental kind of thing. Um, you know, it is very much a free-to-play game, so when you sign up and play the game, uh, you just get essentially a free-to-play NFT that doesn't cost you any money. Uh, very similar to Fortnite, you know, a lot of uh, players don't 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 realize this, but Fortnite makes about five point eight billion revenue a year just on skins, right? Just selling skins, that is it, uh, nothing mm -hmm. else. So you don't need to force players to buy the game to you know or buy an NFT to play the game, right? You can just allow them to get get in and play for fun. And the core, uh, you know, revenue mechanics you need to focus around is converting these free to play players to. To essentially, um, you know, taking advantage of some of your in-app purchases through either skins, season passes, or in our case, you know, one thing that we've also got is allowing people to form clans and have clan battles, etc. Um, you know, giving like a bit of a social aspect to kind of Smashverse as well. Um, so yeah, in terms of the NFTs, they're very much customizable accessories and skins, etc. No kind of in-game um, advantages. Um, associated with them but one thing that we are doing which we're really excited about is essentially um the finishing moves which you you probably saw in, in the game uh, those will be nfts so whilst the finishing move um uh, is an in-game kind of action it's purely a visual action right like once you've got a finisher um that's you know been initiated on you you're, you're always going to die right there's no finisher that's stronger or better than than any other 
um, but it, there are finishers that are visually appealing. So, you know, very similar to like the model combat kind of fatality kind of finishers as well. So that's something we're, we're doing inside the game where players can buy different finishing moves just from a visual kind of appeal, uh, you know, perspective. It's awesome. That's that's the, my questions. Happy to pass it on. Yeah, I do have this, this question, you know, Will rightfully mentioned your, your competitors and, and you also did. So what's your, you know, go-to market? Like how will you attract the first, you know, millions of players Knowing the fact that you know Web three has this um, well reputation with with current gamers, so what what's going to be your approach? There's uh, there's multiple approaches. I'll keep it short. There's multiple approaches. I think the the free to pay uh, character um, River mentioned is is the the, the main way we're going to do that um, and just open it up. I think we want to blur the lines between Web two and Web three as much as possible. So. Um, rather than kind of going after purely the Web3 market, which we, you know, fully know is unstable and, you know, there's no guarantee, uh, just keeping it open. So um, free-to-play NFTs uh, are really accessible launch platforms that will increase initially on PC, then to mobile and then to console over time, over the next, uh, what, six to 12 months. Um, and, um, yeah, the, the kind of the breadth of the, uh, I think the gameplay making it, is, it makes it very accessible and kind of, easy to easy to play as i hope you found out just now but kind of like you know tough to master uh, to experience all the archetypes and then i think also our kind of marketing strategy is really clever too because we're also bringing in real world athletes into the game so there's a lot of kind of like outreach outside of the web3 space with traditional sports combat with mma with boxing uh, with wrestling that you know recognizable nostalgic names that that will bring people and have that kind of social reach um, you know, on top of that, uh, you know, we will do very, very kind of tried and tested traditional user acquisition kind of uh, ad campaigns, etc. Um, you know, just ensuring we, we essentially, you know, use the right graphics, buy ROI positive advertising, make sure the conversions for in-app purchases or in-game purchases um, happen at the right time um, as well. You know, there's, you know, I don't think there's any kind of... Uh, secret or reinvention um, when it comes to like user growth you know the gaming industry's you know perfected this over the last kind of decade with you know fortnite apex legends etc so we, you know we want to follow kind of very similar kind of models and um well thanks for the for the great answer um i go with my my last question around uh you know blockchain and besides nfts are you using other blockchain components i mean also besides you know connecting with a wallet i suppose um, do you have like a token? Do you have, yeah, um, Will touched on the um, earning aspect as well. But mm -hmm. how is that going to look like? Yeah, so, you know, we do have an in-game token. Um, you know, again, that's just, it's a small reward mechanism for essentially, um, you know, specific NFT holders, right? Not all the, not all the kind of players will be able to earn the token. Um, you know, it'll only be the ones that have kind of purchased certain NFTs, et cetera, as well, just to make sure value isn't being extracted from the the kind of ecosystem only um you know in terms of like various different uh other kind of um uh, blockchain integrations you know for example um you know allowing players to form on-chain clans so you know um you know lewis you could set up the export clan and then all of your kind of community could kind of join that and that's recognized kind of on chain so you've got your win loss record all being kind of recorded uh on the blockchain you know um which is something we think is quite exciting and historical there um, other parts as well is essentially what we've done is um, our Genesis collection of our NFTs, we've combined those NFTs with a Twitter profile each. So when you essentially buy the NFT, you get, you get access to a Twitter profile of that Titan, right? Um, and when you sell the NFT, the access to the Twitter profile moves to someone else, uh, i.e. the new owner. Um, so the whole, the whole kind of a vision behind that is allowing players to essentially create their own brand around their NFT and, and their Titan basically uh, through, you know, creating content, streaming on Twitch or Twitter, um, you know, shit posting, uh, challenging each other to kind of um, fights on, on Twitter and kind of, you know, just creating a bit of a ruckus, uh, which is quite exciting for us. So, you know, those are some of the ways that we're using kind of Web3. Um, but, you know, just to finish it off, it's very much a mentality more than specific feature um, you know, the space is going to change every single freaking, you know, six months. Um, so I think the main thing for us is just kind of, you know, adapting with it. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I would have so many more questions, but I will uh, pass it on to Alexei. 
Um, I suppose my question, I'll kind of zoom in on the gameplay piece. I mean, obviously, like uh, Louis mentioned, I could also probably ask a, a thousand questions right now. But I suppose, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm a big fighting game fan historically. I mean, I haven't played all of them, but just like yourself, I'm you know, a big fan of Tekken and things like that. And I suppose one of the great things about Tekken is the kind of variety of moves and the ability to string together interesting combos that lead you to believe that like you know skill is quite an important factor and obviously at points that did feel a bit like button mashy uh and kind of didn't necessarily have like a huge amount of like um you know there wasn't like a huge amount of variety that could be done using like multiple button combinations so i'm just, obviously maybe with a controller that might be a bit different so i'm just interested to know about how you think about like the evolution of like technically skilled gameplay in this game and is that something that you're going to incorporate and i think and, and how are you going to shift the is that are you going to completely like change the current form because right now it's obviously very at least on pc it was very like click 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 press q for a throw and it's just like extremely basic so i'm just wondering like as a, as a fan of fighting games that have this like more dyna dynamism how, how are you gonna are you gonna do that is this just a beta phase or are you gonna shift to that or are you just not gonna do that or, or how are you gonna i think over the time we'll be led by i think like you know to a certain extent by what the community wants like certainly initially for where we're at now which is about getting in some of the uh, the core archetypes in and having that kind of rock paper scissors gameplay then it, it will be um much more accessible much more simple i think the button mashing thing is just a kind of like initial uh, kind of the uh, uh you know uh, what well, people trying out different things so at the moment our move sets are limited um but over time uh, as we build out the archetypes and it's certainly going to evolve i think generally speaking though i think that's the difference between doing something in a 3d space versus like a 2d space where it can be a lot more technical when it's 1v1 or 2v2 um i think super smash bros is a really good example um, and I'm certainly not a, an Xbox by any means, but you can you can get a lot of variety with just like two or three button presses. Nintendo have kept it super simple, simple. So leaning more towards that, making it feel like it's still fair and that you haven't kind of just converged on everyone uh, versus, you know, two large characters on the screen and, and knowing a kind of the labyrinthine movesets um, like, like Street Fighter yeah. or, or Tekken. Yeah. Um, and, and it's very deliberately designed to be, you know, quite simple to get a grip of Alexi as well, right? There's a, you know, um, Kyle or, or a game designer, um, you know, the, you know, he always mentions this, which is essentially, there's a bit of an old saying when it comes to designing combat games, which is for every button input you add, uh, you lose a million players, um, you know, so while you can, you know, make it a lot more kind of in-depth, et cetera, what you start to do is just kind of reduce the accessibility of it um, for new players and even longer term players that kind of get frustrated with, with the learning curve as well. Um, you know, so where we're adding depth is through more around like positioning. So, you know, whilst you can just do the very simple basic attack, uh, players are able to, you know, uh, walk away, run, dodge, block, um, you know, or, or like counter as well, right? There's like four or five different ways that you can kind of counter that initial kind of little kind of, you know, string combo, um, which might not be apparent uh, when you first play the game. It might feel a bit button mashy, but then you start to unlock that depth as you kind of try these other moves out in response to that kind of attack mode. So the depth does, is there. It just doesn't feel like it's there, uh, you know, on initial kind of uh, feel. And that's very deliberate to kind of just allow people to kind of have fun and play the game and enjoy it, right? We wanted to avoid the Smash Bros. problem, uh, Smash Bros., the Smash Bros. issue that every beginner player has, which is how the heck do I get back to the level after getting knocked out? Um, that learning curve is, is the biggest learning curve in Smash Bros, right? Once you figure that out, you can enjoy the game and, and not get frustrated by it as much. Um, but it's amazing how many players drop off between playing the game, falling down, and not being able to recover, and then just giving up and, and frustration, etc. cetera. Um, you know, and then also there's different archetypes as well, right? So it's not just the the boxer and make fighter and the wrestler. You know, we'll have 14 all together. So, um, you know, as a player, you will be able to play other characters, um, you know, that have a different nuanced moveset and different kind of uh, gameplay experience depending on, you know, your uh, preference as well. Some characters will be faster and more combo oriented. Some will be slower, more heavy damage. Um, some will be more support characters, et cetera, as well. Um, so those type of things are very important for us when um, you know ensuring the game feels fun, fresh, and there's always like a different game gameplay experience no matter where you know how often you play it. Um, yeah, I had a lot of longer questions, but I suppose if I ask the shorter ones, uh, what's the engine you're building this on? Uh, we're building this on Real. Got it. And what are you using to connect to the blockchain? What blockchain are you using, really? 
Yeah. Oh, we haven't decided yet. We've, you know, we've been exploring different ones, et cetera. Um, you know, we do like Avalanche, being able to obviously deploy our own subnet, et cetera, and, and kind of control the, the token and the gas prices around that. Um, you know, but for us, like I made it very clear to our community, like I don't really give a crap about the tech. I just care about the experience, you know? So, you know, for us, we, we'll do anything to make sure we can just onboard as many players as possible seamlessly into the game and be able to kind of, you know, essentially operate a sustainable game. So perfect timing. Every leader has less than 30 seconds to say yes or no. Uh, uh, so what does yes mean? It means you're interested in this deal to 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 look into it further and to discuss with the team to seriously uh, consider investing. No means you're not ready to do it at this stage. Uh, you have like 15 seconds each. Will, you can start. Sure. Um, obviously, I'd like to learn more about what you're raising and what, and what uh, valuation. So it's tough to just off the rip uh, give you an answer. But for for us, I think the scary piece is is uh, looking at the competitors you mentioned and looking at the current product. It's tough to to jump in. Um, so I'd want to see the game a little bit more progressed uh, and obviously know the details before I, I gave a solid answer. Uh, until then, you know, I'd, I'd withhold. Yep. Uh, well, obviously, without figures, it's, it's hard to to judge. Uh, but as far as uh, I mean, I'm curious to look at numbers and and because the gameplay is, you know, if we look at the current state of Web3, it's it's above par, and you know we're very gameplay and and like a cool game focused and 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 I think you know Smash versus is, is one of them, so I'm keen to yeah look deeper into the numbers. Yeah, on our side, Dad would definitely just need to dig a little bit deeper you know we're at, at the moment we're just being extremely cautious about like you know what games we get involved with but you know there was definitely some fun components to what was there um today and would definitely be open to continuing the conversation um i think i, I i'm curious to learn more uh, but I think I'll echo Will here and say, you know, we're not looking at this in the context of the landscape of Web3 games, but more in the context of games as a whole, because the the size of the Web3 gamer user base is, is rather small. And so any successful game will, you know, in the medium to long term, will probably have to orient towards a traditional gamer base. And so the standards there for, for visual and quality mechanics and so forth are a little bit different, I think, right now. And so that's that's our measuring stick. But um, I am curious to learn a lot more, really. OK, fantastic. So I guess like most people here are interested to, to learn more, to go further. So I guess great discussion will come out of it. It was a pleasure to have everybody here today. A great first for this kind of uh, experiment where we play test. So thank you very much for, for you and your team. To, to help us really enjoy the game. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I say bye to everyone here, and yeah, let's see each other for next episode of the Tavern. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good. Bye. Bye. Bye.